I can't get over the fact that this Mortal Kombat looking badass who up until a couple of weeks ago was probably one of the most frightening mofos in this show. You thought, holy shit, he's gonna uh, pull a finisher. And wow, yeah, sure, there's more powerful characters more than likely. Like, that will be a force to be reckoned with. And from last week to this week, and just seeing how the tables were turned, how even, like, Clayman was pretty much the reason for his actual downfall after Albus made him look like nothing and his duplicate, you know, double trouble type deal was nothing to even worry about. Like, the way they escalated power scaling in this episode was really well done because this was just one big epic shonen battle fest. It was awesome. It was eye candy, it was fun, and those who wanted action and slime, well, your prayer should be answered with this week's episode. Pretty much kick it off with... Honestly, you have the father, who is one of the best characters of part two so far. I love him. I love the personality. He kind of feels like Violent Santa. You know, he's someone who you could easily see, like, gives gifts to the needy, and he's just a genuinely good dude, but can also crush your skull if he gets a little too angry. Like, I just love the character. And just seeing, like, the dragons and things like that fight, and just how, like, yeah, it's... Honestly, a pretty close fight, all things considered, and then you get, like, the information about the reason why a human's that powerful. Oh, it's actually the same species, it's just, you know, they look really, really human. And then you go over to Albus, and she's just destroying everything. Like, literally, our boy had to run with the others because she was causing such an electrifying storm that... It's like two things, either slimed or rocked, like petrification. There was no in-between. You were either getting gooped or you're getting stoned, and no matter what, everything was just going horrible, and they were in for a rude awakening that was death. And, I mean, this dude, like, often I think if you had a character as cool as him, one of the fingers, who just looked like a Mortal Kombat badass, and you made him look weak within a matter of episodes, generally I'd probably be disappointed. But when you have an arsenal of badasses on all the sides, when you see one just actually not end up being all that powerful in comparison to the others, especially since many of them, including characters like Benny Maru since the resurrection, and just, you know, the leveling up with Rimuru becoming Demon Lord, granting blessings to his followers, you know, they're way more powerful than what normally would be seen as overpowered in the story that we're usually following. So to see him, you know, get destroyed, and I actually thought still, like, I was like, oh, he'll become a prisoner and maybe end up being a devoted follower to Rimuru just because he's the most powerful cook in the kitchen, right? So I'm going to follow the person who seems like he's going to be the victor. And the fact that Clayman came in with his almost like master hands, like level manipulation, forcing him to turn into that creature... Like, even though it wasn't the same, like, power level, it was pretty much just a fragment of power of what we fought at the end of Season 1, where Milam came in and just caused total annihilation, that road still being repaired as far as I know. It was pretty interesting, and I thought what was going to happen is, like, they easily made me just buy into what was happening on screen. I didn't try to stretch my brain, I think it's just kind of like the type of episode it is, right? When you see so much action... You're just here for the fun, and if the action is fun, you don't find yourself speculating all too much. At least that's how I feel. So when, it basically, it kind of felt like the enemy of my enemy is my friend, where you have the father, you have the dragons, things like that, the beast people, and I was like, okay, they're going to team up, and they're going to destroy it. Because even though it probably would die on its own within a day's time, you don't want to risk the chance of it gaining, you know, food and things like that, and becoming something that's actually a danger. And then Benny Maru pops up and one-shots it. I'm sure there will be those naysayers saying like, well, if Benny Maru can do that, there's never any threat. But, you know, whatever. I don't care at this point. That's just some badass shit. I'm very interested to see what Benny Maru's relationship will be with the father. Because Midray and him are so interesting. I honestly think they might have some of the most in-common personalities that we've seen so far. Because they were ready to square up. Because they both just value power. And the fact that both sides, like, top followers were shitting their pants as the general soldiers in the backgrounds were pretty much petrified like Albus was there, and you had to literally break them apart because they just wanted to rumble, honestly, it'll be interesting because, really, like, they're not stupid. They know they don't want war and they don't want to step on each other's toes if, like, they don't want to hurt Milam's followers and they don't want to get into a fight they know they can't win, but there's, like, that general hot-headedness between, like, the father and Benny Mario of just wanting to square up against someone who would put up a fight. God damn, you gotta love that type of shit. And it's gonna be fun to see where they take it because, I mean, the only fight that was kind of brutal for our hero side was definitely my boy Geld and company because... 
really, when they switched over in the last three or so minutes of the episode, and we see Geld and him just, like, winded, wounded, but I was like, okay, they're, you know, they're gonna turn the tables, like, maybe they'll get reinforcements Benny Maru style, and then you see this, like, giant laser blast come, destroy his shield, and then they say, you know what, we're gonna retreat and spare you your lives because you're entertaining. I was like, well, shit, you know, I guess a loss is in order, but it does seem like, based on the conversation with Benny Maru with the telepathic, like, communication, they wanted that to happen, so it'll be interesting to see if Clayman's gonna have an even bigger head because of this, because the clowns seemingly were able to deal with certain people, or if Clayman's gonna start being a little more collected. Highly doubt it, but you never quite know. I mean, honestly, I gotta give props to Clayman for taking out one of the fingers and basically creating something that, in a normal circumstance, would actually cause something to, you know, turn the tables of war. But when you have someone like Benny Maru, and that's just one of your soldiers in your very hefty arsenal, it's kind of understandable why Clayman's probably going to live in a world of delusion when the only people who really came back to him are two of the clowns, and, you know, one of his top soldiers, the Finger, is pretty much just a pile of ash and rubble at this point, right? I mean, slime's just goddamn fun. It really, really is. And we had an interesting conversation in the comments section. I talked about, like, the idea of, like, what is too political, you know, is season two different than season one? And I had a great variety of responses in the comment section, which kind of like shed some light on why maybe some people are feeling different about this season than myself. But I mean, when action's here, I love it. I think it's damn impressive. I mean, it's refreshing for sure to have season two have an episode like this dominated by that crazy action. And I think the way they handled that power scaling, like I mentioned, with what you thought was powerful and then introducing someone who's more powerful and up and up and up until we got to Benny Maru. I mean, it's fun. Like, yeah, there's pretty much no doubt in my mind that Rimuru will end up winning. He'll kill probably Clayman or Milam will kill Clayman. I'm not sure which one I want to bet on just yet because we still haven't seen enough of Milam's story towards Rimuru, like them interacting since the brainwashing, so I'm not quite sure. But Rimuru winning and being accepted as Demon Lord over Clayman seems all but given. And seeing how they're getting there, it just kind of feels to me almost like a rewatch, where some people don't like rewatching anime because they know what happens. For me, if it's one of my favorites, I'm going to rewatch it even if I've seen it a dozen times. That's kind of what it feels here right now. Like, unless they pull a really wild twist out of nowhere, I feel like I know the general path, but you can still have episodes like these where the power imbalances can just shake up and just cause such a shitstorm that it's just so fun. Is like... Even if I think I know the end objective and goal and how it's going to be met, there's still some unexpected twists that they can pull on either a visual level, destructive level, and hell, even bring back a creature, even if it's in a very weakened form that I thought was going to cause a ruckus up until next week, got uh, one-shotted, and you never quite know what is really dangerous in the world of slime. Now, I ain't gonna lie, I actually thought Gillen might end up dead in this episode, which might be a little foolish to think, but I mean, just given how easy it was going for a lot of the characters, it was like, oh... I mean, that laser blast could easily destroy him, and I'm glad he made it out, because Yeld is truly best boy in more ways than one. Especially if you've seen the Slime Diaries, it's hard not to appreciate his character all the more, but... But many thoughts and feelings of this week's Slime episode. Definitely excited even more so than usual for next week, after just kind of getting that burst of adrenaline. But let me know what you're feeling down below, your favorite fight in the episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.